I am very aware of the damage I am doing to my son through overeating. These last six years have probably been pretty miserable for him. While all patients on My 600 Pound Life suffer the consequences of their weight, pretty often their families end up suffering some terrible consequences of their own. Most of them don't mean to be bad parents, but it's hard to be a good one when you're forcing your kids to wait on you while refusing to make changes to actually be a parent to them. I feel kinda bad making this video, but here are a few My 600 Pound Life guests that were terrible parents. Before we get started though, leave a comment down below, letting us know who your favorite My 600 Pound Life guest is. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, that way you enter into our monthly shoutout giveaway. 40-year-old Bethany starts out her episode by saying that despite her weight and health issues, she just can't sit down and do anything because she's a mom of two kids. But in the very next shot, we see her kind of sitting down and doing nothing, getting her 10-year-old daughter Zoe to help dress her. She also relies on her 18-year-old Isabella to be essentially the mother in the family around the clock. Isabella cooks, cleans, shops, and takes care of Zoe, and despite doing basically everything, she says that she'll do anything for her mom, because she loves her. Bethany admits herself that she doesn't feel like a contributing member of the family, and unfortunately, she doesn't do much to change her issues by the end of the episode. I do all the cooking, I do all the cleaning, and I make sure Zoe's fed and bathed. I make sure that we have groceries in the house, but I love my mom and I will do anything for her no matter what. What do you want for breakfast? Um, I'm gonna start with like a honey bun and a muffin and then if you'll make me like some scrambled eggs and some toast. Okay. Isabella? Yeah? I wanna have something to eat before, while you're making breakfast. Okay. Penny's son, Liam, loves her dearly, but at over 500 pounds, she can only parent him from bed. That means never attending his school functions or taekwondo practice. But what's even sadder is when her sister points out that Liam might have to see his mother dead before he turns 10 years old. Penny claims she wants to lose weight because Liam deserves a full-time mother, but by 10 months into the weight loss program, she's still too immobile to even attend Liam's kindergarten graduation. Just think about that for a second. Imagine if your mother could not come to your kindergarten graduation because she was too overweight and didn't make the efforts to lose the weight. Moving on, Penny later changes her tune of wanting to be a better mom by claiming that she's done more with Liam than mothers who have to go out in the workplace do, and makes an empty sounding promise that she'll be at his next event. In the end, when Penny went back to Maryland, she excuses her lack of progress again by saying she doesn't have to be an ideal weight because Liam has seen what she'll do for him and that he's supposedly proud of her. Liam loves her so much and I thought having him would change everything, but it hasn't. It's gotten worse. What can we say besides goodbye? I don't know. See you later? Uh-oh. I don't ever have to be an ideal weight in Liam's eyes because he's seen what I'm willing to do for him. And he's proud of me. 50-year-old Pauline is bordering on immobile and needs help with just about everything, and her niece comes over a few times a week to help her in the bathroom. But her full-time caretaker and the real victim of her episode is her 21-year-old son, Dylan. As Pauline's only child, he's been taking care of her basically his whole life and does everything from cooking to grocery shopping to hauling her into the van and driving her down to Houston. Dylan says he loves his mother, but that he can't wait for the day that he doesn't have to help her every day and can get on with his own life. Pauline is very aware of the damage, admitting that the last six years must have been miserable for him and that she could possibly ruin her son's life if she doesn't get hers under control. It's pretty heartbreaking to get to the end of her episode and to see Dylan still trailing along by her wheelchair and looking downright miserable. Hey, Dill. Go grab some breakfast with me. I totally feel like 
he's the parent and I'm the kid. I love my mom, but since she's this heavy, whatever I'm doing, I have to stop and just take care of her and help her. I am very aware of the damage I am doing to my son through overeating. These last six years have probably been pretty miserable for him. Ashley's weight has reduced her mobility so much that she gets her five-year-old son Patrick to do just about everything. With her truck driver husband gone most of the week, every household chore falls on him, including laundry and even bringing her food, essentially replacing his childhood with basically being his mother's servant. Ashley also admits that she's scared he's learning a lot of her eating habits, which is pretty concerning with parents and kids on the show. Now I will give Ashley some credit, as she definitely isn't the worst offender on this list. Plus, in the end, she does make an effort to lose some serious weight and starts being a better mother to Patrick. I just can't do it on my own. It's hard for her to walk, so I do the stuff that she wants me to do every day. Yeah, there's no one. Will you put them in the dryer pretty please? Mm-hmm. Our food is mostly what Pat and microwave are carrying here for me to prepare. And it scares me that he's learning a lot of his eating habits from me. Hey, baby. But I'm trying new things each day to work through how I feel instead of avoiding it until I get overwhelmed. Without him, I'd be lost. James K. has been bedbound for three years and depends on his enabling girlfriend Elisa and his daughter Bailey to help him with everything. He's developed cellulitis on both legs, which causes a lot of yelling at his helpers due to the pain when they're trying to wash or move him. Not really a pleasant situation for anyone. James admits that he can tell that it bothers Bailey a lot from the way she looks at him. Bailey even says her mom pulled her out of school to help out, which must have sucked. She feels that a father should be the one taking care of his daughter, but she accepts the caregiver role because she's not just going to let her dad die. To make things worse, she's miserable knowing that he's gotten even worse and that she's going to be helpless to do anything about it. My mom pulled me out of school because I have to help with my dad. My dad's gotten worse and I'm worried. He's close to losing it all. He basically already has. I can tell that it bothers Bailey a lot by the way she looks at me. I don't feel like that I should have to be a caretaker to my dad because a father is supposed to protect and take care of his daughter. Just in case. But it's my dad, and I'm not going to let him just lay there. After having her oldest son with husband Elroy, Mila wanted more children, but she was already pushing 500 pounds. And instead of getting her weight under control, like any other normal person would, they still opted for adoption, dooming their new kids to a life of caregiving. Due to her severe lymphedemia, Mila hasn't stood up for over two years, and her husband's health issues prevent him from helping her. So the three middle kids, 15-year-olds Hannah and Caleb and 16-year-old Jacob, have to get up before sunrise every morning to help clean her whole body. Hannah admits that she's depressed and mentions that they don't always want to get their mom some of the stuff she's requesting from the grocery store, but she'll get mad if they don't, and they feel bad for her being confined to her bed. Eventually, we get to see how she acts when she doesn't get her way, when she demands her son to pick up her food order. Here, just take a look at this. It's a little heartbreaking, and you gotta feel bad for the kid. I'm depressed. Like... Real depressed that she can't get out of bed. If she ever passed away, she wants me to uh, take her to the kids. None of us wants to lose our parents, and it really hurts to know that they don't get the update they get. They will pass, and we don't want to lose them. Are you open? No, ma'am, we're not yet. What time are you open? We open at 10.30. Oh, okay. Uh, can I place an order for pickup? Go and pick up my pizza right now. I think I'll let you know. No, right now. Go get the pizza right now. 